Hey friends and welcome back. My name is Kayla Barreto and this is going to be another OCC Operation Christmas Child video. And my sweet little one wants to say hi to the camera too. Say hello. Can you say hello? Say how are you? Good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. So today I'm actually going to show you guys some of what we do when we get a letter in one of the shoe boxes. So the hope and dream and goal would be for those kids to write to the person that sent them the box. And we always try to encourage them. We show them we show them how to do it. It's easiest if it has an email because to send a letter from Columbia, where we live, it costs about, I want to say three to nine dollars. I can't remember exactly. And so we always recommend to put, if you want a response from the kids, to put an email because snail mail, sending an actual letter from a foreign country costs quite a bit of money. I want to say the last time we checked, it was like nine dollars to send a standard letter. Let me grab. I've got all sorts of envelopes here. So yeah, to send a letter this size um, with whatever we send in it, let me show you guys, with whatever we send in it, fold it up, this would cost about $9 to ship internationally. And so it's just not feasible for most kiddos to be able to do that. And so if you really want a response from kids, I would recommend putting an email and making sure that it's legible. So I will say I already tried to respond to a couple of emails and unfortunately they bounced back saying that the email did not exist. Um, so that's just another tip. Just make sure that it's a good email and that your handwriting is legible for the kiddos um, that you are sending boxes to. So I wanna start off with a couple of statistics. So we received 200 boxes and of those 200 boxes, 38 of them had letters in them. Now, I will say it's possible that we missed a letter or two because we did have some huge events with 60 to 80 kids. And so it's very possible that in those big events, we missed a letter as kids were opening the boxes. But the ones that we saw, there were 38 letters. So of the 200 boxes, 38 letters, that's about 19% of our boxes had letters. Of those 38, four sets of them were from big churches. So some of the boxes that we got that came in one of the bigger Samaritan's Purse boxes had various shoe boxes from the same church. So there was one church, I'm gonna look, these are all, all of them typed up. But um, there was one church that we got two boxes from, I'm looking again. We had another church that we got two or three boxes from. And then there was one that I think we got, let's see, one, two, three boxes. There was one though that we got quite a few boxes from, let's see, this one. I'm going to not show you their address, but this one we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I actually think there might have been one more that I need to check and make sure. So seven or eight shoe boxes came from this same church. So I'm going to end up sending one letter with all of those kiddos. I give a little story. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I do when I am responding to the letters that we get in shoe boxes. So again, you hope that those kids respond, but we try as pastors, as missionaries, when we see a letter, we try to respond to that person, let them know where their box got to, what kid received it, especially if we know the kid personally. Again, a lot of these are outreach events. So it's a kid that comes one time and we don't necessarily know them by name. I try to ask them their name and remember it, but with 38 of these that had shoe boxes with letters. I forgot some of those names, but we try to get the name for the kid. We try to give a little bit of background and something that the person that sent the shoe box can be praying for. And then we always give them our contact information as well. So I'm gonna take you guys through what we do to pack and prep these letters back to the shoe box packers. So this is a quick look at what we send every time we see a letter in a shoebox. We send a little note explaining who we are, what our ministry is, with our contact information and stuff like that. 
We also try to send a newsletter or two just to give them a little bit more background on ministry. It also gives them some prayer requests and things that they can pray for in terms of the ministry as a whole. And then we always try to send a little letter explaining who the child was with their name if we know it. So I'm covering up right now. This is the address where we are going to send this letter. And then this is an example of like the personal note that we send about the shoebox. So currently I've got the little girl's face covered up with this is the address of where we're going to send it. But this one, for instance, says this little girl's mom comes to our Thursday night Bible study regularly. I cannot remember the little girl's name because she came to the group this one time. Her mom's name is Ingrid. Thanks to the shoebox gift you sent, she was able to hear the gospel and take home a booklet that explains all about who Jesus is and how God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. Please pray that this whole family will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Her favorite things in the shoebox were the teddy bear and the Chelsea Barbie. And so I tried to get a picture. My camera was a little blurry on this picture, but I tried to get a picture of her holding her favorite items and then just another one of her opening the shoebox. And so we always try to send a little bit of background, a little bit of an idea of what child received that shoebox, just so that the person can pray specifically for the receiver of the shoebox. And then the last thing that we try to send is a prayer card with us, with our family, and then with some information for our ministry. So right now I'm going to get to packing these letters up. And if you're wondering, we are not going to spend $9 a letter to send them. Thankfully, in, at the end of July, we actually have a missions conference. And there are some people coming down from the United States to help host the conference. And because of that, I'm going to have all of these packed up. And I'm going to ship them back to the U.S. in the suitcase of somebody and then ask that person to do us the favor of dropping them in the mail so that we pay normal U.S. postage versus international postage fees. So that's how we're getting around um, sending them. I will say all of these that I have packed here only gave us physical addresses. So I couldn't even try to send an email. Um, so again, if you want a response, if you want an easy response, and if you want a quick response, the easiest way is through email. Because I didn't have emails, these are snail mail, so it takes longer to begin with, but also I had to work around the international postage fees, and so it's not gonna get sent until July, end of July, beginning of August, when someone can take them back to the States for us. So, but I'm gonna get to packing them up today. I'm trying to get the letters done and I needed something to hold Eliana's attention. And we had never put batteries in this. So we'll see how long this keeps sweet little Eliana entertained. More interested in the camera than the toy. <laughs> oh goodness.
Okay, so I have all of these letters packed up. It is not all 38 of them yet. Um, I did send, I think, four. I ended up finding had emails, so I was able to send the rest of those. Some of these have like four boxes going to the same church um, with pictures of all four of those kids. I think the most that I had was seven boxes from one church. And so, like I said, I'm sending one letter with pictures from seven kids that received those seven boxes. And so that takes away some of them. So I don't have to send 39 letters uh, or 38 letters, but this is the bulk of them. I do still have a couple more to get prepped today. And I need to write their addresses on them still. I haven't done that, but I have all of the addresses stuck to them. And then I will get them addressed and ready to send so that when the missionaries come for the conference, they can take them back to the States with them. But I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about what we try to do in response to the letters that we receive. And also just to encourage you, if you pack a shoebox, send a letter. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that touch hearts. So yes, the kids love the toys and they love the things that are sent, but it's such a heart impact when the kids get a letter. And whether or not they know English, um, seeing your picture or just seeing that it came from someone adds a sense of personalization to it. It also helps us to explain to the kids that we didn't give them the gifts. Um, so when there's a letter or something, it shows them that this came from someone else. And so that's something that we always love and we always highlight when they do get them. Um, but just wanted to share that with you guys today. But that's it for today. I am prepping the video on the things that you all suggested as shoebox packers. And there are some cool things that you guys listed. So stick around for that. I will put a link over here to a couple of videos that you guys might like. And if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That way you guys don't miss any of the videos that we put out. And we will see you on the next video.